We have a packed agenda today, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Anya Lehmann, Innovation Director here at Ascender. If you are new to Ascender, welcome. If this is not your first time at one of our Ascender events, welcome back. It's very nice to see you. Ascender is um, Pittsburgh Communities for Entrepreneurs. We offer educational programming, incubation, expert coaching, um, uh, boot camps, and, uh, and educational programmings that happen twice a month. Uh, this, for example, is part of our educational series, um, a real talk, uh, or real talk series. So I'm really happy that you're here today. Um, today's discussion, uh, it's you know, it's going to be a part of the real talk series where we really want to make sure that uh, that we can find um, experts, founders, uh, to really think about this space uh, as a space where we can share um, honest. Um, Honest, where we can incentivize honest discussion and uh, and really uh, res answer the questions that you um, that you send when you register. So um, our our executive director Nandili Nunez will be leading the discussion today, and she's also uh, going to be uh, talking about do's and don'ts when it comes to um, uh, prepping for your application for an incubator or accelerator. Um, Complications. So, without further ado, I want to make sure that uh, that we that I leave enough time for for the discussion and for the presentation. Um, after the discussion, as after the real talk, um, please stick around. We ask you if you needed a little help with some feedback on a one-to-one -one basis. So, we're going to explain a little bit a little bit more about how that's going to work after the real talk. So, just make sure that that you are on the lookout on that. So. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass it on to our executive director, Nadine Nunez, who will be uh, uh, starting the real talk today and telling us more, a, a little bit more about how, how today is going to go. All right, everyone. So you heard how fast Anya was speaking. And so that's the speed that we're going to be going in today because we're trying to fit a lot in just an hour. So uh, one of the things I'm going to speed through this presentation, get your screenshot skills up to date in the next 10 seconds or pull out your phone to take some photos of your screen because I'm going to zoom through this as well so we can get to our awesome guest, Lindsay and Leah. All right, here I go. Let's see, share. All right, folks. Uh, and if I look down, it's because I got three screens. The team is going to tell me I'm talking too fast or there's a question. So, all right. So today for the next kind of five, 10 minutes is step your application game up. All right. That's what we're all here for. You registered. And if you weren't here for a while, well, for it, well, you're stuck. So, all right. And this is according to me. You can ask multiple reviewers and they're all going to tell you something different. It sucks, but it's the reality. But might as well hear, you know, the perspectives here today than none at all. All right, so let's let's kind of level set here, right? The typical application sections are fall, usually fall into here in one way or another. It's what's the problem you're trying to solve? You know, what's the pain point, the inconvenience that you're trying to address? What's the solution? What is your actual product? How is your and how is your product actually addressing that problem? And and again, this takes the form differently on the application. The sustainability. This is the revenue model. This is the business model. How. How will you make money to sustain your business? You might not be making it right now, but how do you intend to, to, uh, to make money moving forward? The competition. Are there others solving this problem? That's okay if the answer is yes. In fact, the answer is always yes. And, I, and please never say there isn't anyone solving this because that's not true. The solution is always what, how people are currently addressing this problem, even if it's not an actual product. Uh, and then that's why you have indirect versus direct competition. And then lastly is who is the team, which is who's propelling this forward. The sections can be more in detail or more superficial based on the application. It changes from organization to organization, from purpose to purpose. But this is kind of like what you'll see consistently. But while these are the questions that we ask on the application, what are we actually looking for? when we're reading the application. So for the problem is one, to educate ourselves on the context. So is it a medical device? Is it you know, an app for nutritional app? Gives us a context of what the problem you're trying to address. So we, we can figure out our Rolodex. Well, who else do we know about this? Or who else has tried to solve this? Or what do we already know about that market? But also to see 
did you do your research? Do you know your market? Do you know the problem? Uh, and, and the reason I'll explain in a couple of points below in a, in a few minutes. Uh, the next section is the solution. So can this solution actually solve this problem? So sometimes people talk about world hunger, but really the solution is like they've got a plate that they're selling. That might be a beautiful plate, but oof, what a disconnect. Like I don't, what, I, I don't see the connection here. And then the, uh, and it also lets us know again, how much have you actually worked out? So if you are looking to do an app do you have the app already created? Is it just the idea of the app? And there's no wrong answer here. I, we just want you to be honest about where you are at. Next is the sustainability, usually the kind of profit, profitability uh, of the product or service. Um, but what I like to call is, I really wanna know if there's a founder solution, ro solution romance going on. So is the founder actually just more in love with their solution? than the problem they're trying to solve and the business that they're building. So are they actually trying to build the business or they've got you know on a honeymoon state with some cool app or idea that they had? That's what I'm looking for. Are you thinking about the business? And the answer to this you know, might not be totally correct, but that there is at least an effort in thinking of the business model. The competition. Did you Google your idea? I don't know why I have to keep saying this, Google your idea. I mean, Google is a verb. Let's go. It's not that hard. Uh, is someone else doing that? And that's okay. Like I said, it's okay if someone else is doing that. And just tell us, like, what's something different or unique of how you're doing it? Is it that it looks cooler? There's something about the brand? Is it the tone? Is that it's usually marketed to this target audience, but you want to focus on this other one? I don't care. But just Google what other people are doing. Tell me how you are different and never, ever, ever say no one is in this field. I mean, yeah, just don't, just don't. And then the team is, uh, does your current team of advisors have the current industry knowledge related to your problem or solution? If the answer, if let's say you're an app developer, um, you have that background, but you're looking to get into, let's say, in the nutritional world. Maybe you're not a nutritionist. Maybe you have an advice. We understand there are going to be gaps because that's why a company that is in a growth phase, that's why they have a team. They have the marketing person. They have the sales. We know you don't have it all, but we do want to know what you do have and also say um, and be aware of what you still need. And we'll get into that a little bit more. Check the time here. All right. But. On top of those things, there's also kind of the reading between the lines. So in addition to the problem solution, the revenue model competition and team, we want to know these things as well. Have you talked to other people about this solution? That's called customer discovery. Have you talked? And I don't, it's not two people. It's not three people. We want a lot more than that. Have you talked to people that are unlike you or unlike each other about this solution? And are they willing to pay for this solution? The next thing, and it's always hard to measure, is the potential of this idea, especially if you're early, you're selling the potential of what this can be. So that's part of the things that we also are looking for in the application. Self-awareness. It is okay if you don't know things. If you knew everything, you wouldn't need to apply for our program, okay? And we don't care if your business model sucks or it's, you know, your problem statement isn't perfect. It's going to get better over time, but can you at least be self-aware of what you do and do not know and that you're making an honest attempt, even in this application? Because to us, if you're making an honest attempt now, that means you are going to participate and try your best during our program. And then lastly is, can we actually help you? There are applicants who just, who just have it all together. And honestly, we can't really help them, or maybe we can, but not within this uh, program. And that's okay. Sometimes it's more, you're too early. You got a lot of, you know, one-on-one -on -one things to figure out before you can, uh, before we can help you most effectively. And that's where, you know, you can always return and say, hey, can I get any feedback? Or was there anything in my application so that you can come stronger either to this program or to one moving forward? One thing, these are kind, this is from the Founders Institute. Sometimes people just don't even know how to talk about their product. And this is just a way to get you started. The first one is very kind of 
you know, high level, but the spec cool one kind of gives us a lot of information in just a few sentences. Uh, I've read, I've read 500 words of someone describing their solution that at the end of it, I still have no idea what they're doing. No idea. So maybe this can help you. So if there is anything to take a screenshot of, do this. This is even just a good practice for yourself. Can you actually talk about your product effectively? And this is a nice framework to get started. All right, tips. Determine the value add of the incubator accelerator before you even apply. Okay, there are, certain, there, are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of successful companies who didn't even go through one of those programs and there are successful companies who did. So you gotta figure out based on the program, what are you looking to get out of it? Can you get something out of it? Second, uh, attend an info session, ask what they want to learn from the application. Every, you know, Leah and I, we've done the South by, and Anya too, we've done South by Southwest, we've done our own programs and every, and every single time there's weight put differently in different aspects of the application. So maybe just ask, but we ultimately always wanna know was why this, why now, and why you? You can answer that in your application, you're, you're doing all right. Describe, okay, describe, please describe. There are people who said maybe five words and like, this is my solution. It's gonna be an app that's gonna sort like solve world hunger. Uh, all right, or it's an app that's gonna make you buying insurance easier. All right, cool, like that's the outcome. But we see a lot of people with those ideas and the outcome, is, but where they fail is how did they get there? What's the plan to get there? Uh, try to keep it under 150 words and 150 words is a lot. But at this early stage, we understand that you're still learning how to be concise and you're still learning how to market and talk about your thing um, appropriately. So we get it. Uh, can someone not on your, oh, can someone not on your team understand your business? We are not on your team. So think of it as that. Can we understand, can we tell someone else about your business is what you told us, okay? Offer visuals when possible. In fact, I often go to the website first just to get a feel of the app, if they didn't offer something already, of the product, of whatever it is. And then just learn how to Google, whether it's your product or a term or problem statements, how to do things, okay? That's just fundamental as an entrepreneur skill. Lastly, reminders. You can be impressive even at the idea stage. You are selling me a vision. You are selling me a future. And even if you have a lot of progress, I want to see, did you at least do some upfront research? Did you, did you try, okay? Uh, you, some of these things you can't teach. Occasionally, solving the problem is not the selling point. So I bring this up because they're creative businesses that sell ceramics. Ceramics have existed forever, right? But what is it about your ceramic, your brand, your target audience, how you do it that makes you special, okay? Uh, reviewers have different lenses and thresholds. I already mentioned that we all come from a different place. And the sum of parts is what matters. So I mentioned all these sections that are important and you might be overwhelmed. Well, we're good at this, we're not good at this. That's okay, like we don't expect you to score 100 in all of it, but we like to get the overall view of where you are at. So don't get intimidated when you don't, you don't have it all figured out in a certain section, okay? Don't be as us. Don't BS us. We know when you are BSing us, okay? You, we know you don't have all the answers and we'd rather you actually outright say, we're still trying to figure out what the right business model is. We are exploring maybe these three options and we would wanna to participate to figure that out. And then lastly is always do your best. And that sounds obvious, but we know when certain applicants didn't do their best. Uh, so the last thing is just some links here. Ben is gonna put it in the chat. Here are some things to help you on how to write a problem statement, uh, some customer discovery, how to think about your value proposition, and Grammarly is a great tool to ensure that you are communicating effectively. So that's that. Now we're gonna go off to the conversation. All right, and, and Anya, I can keep my kneecaps because I, I did this quickly for you. <laughs> That was excellent, right uh, time. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Welcome, Lindsay and Leah. Leah, where are you? Where are you? Can't find you. Oh, there you are, okay. There you are. Okay, so I sent the two of you uh, a couple of sentences. So what I like to start with is a speed round, 
And the speed round gets as much information out as possible without going to this larger conversation, which we, which we can eventually do. But let's just get these out of the way. Let's make this a sentence. And Leah, don't freak out. You have the answers to all of these. Don't worry. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, so first, I'll start with I'll start with um, Leah. Okay. On average, finish this sentence for me. Okay. On average, I spend blank minutes per application. Five to ten. We have a pretty short application. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, depending on the application, I'll spend maybe 10 to 15, depending on the application. If I'm familiar with the area, I'm going to even follow my own rules. I'm explaining. All right. Second question, Leah. I prefer when founders describe their product from the perspective of the founder, the customer, an investor, or a teacher speaking to an eighth grader. Founder to general audience, think elevator pitch. Great. I think for me, it's like, pretend I'm the customer. How will I experience this? All right, when reviewing an application, I put more weight on blank. Founder, team. For me is, is just the general tone of the application and self-awareness, because it's hard to teach that. All right, I'm always confused when companies decide to blank on applications. Oh, a hard one. Give me like three words. Uh, why did you apply? <laughs> I can't read this. I, I don't know anything about you. That's, that's my answer. That's my answer too. It happens more frequently than you realize. All right, true or false? I get annoyed when a potential applicant reaches out with questions. False, so very false. False, 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 false. Uh, but don't reach out the day before, okay? <laughs> Is that what Lindsay's gonna say? <laughs> All right, Lindsay, you're up. Thank you, thank you, Leah. I'm gonna screw up your names because it's just both L's. A lot of L's. Yeah. All right, Lindsay. Yeah, All right, Lindsay. So the three questions I ask myself before applying to a program are? So I think for me, it was, I wrote some stuff down. Um, I look at the program from a perspective of how much money are you getting and how much equity are you giving up, right? So there, there's vast differences across these accelerator programs. Um, the mentor network. Do not apply to an accelerator that's not gonna help you from the, the network perspective. In your industry in particular, and I would say, um, the, so I would say looking at the um, companies that have come out of that accelerator to see if they've gone on to raise additional funding or the success out of that program or the three things I looked at. Great. True or false? I reach out to the program before I apply. Absolutely. This, okay, I'll, I can go. Yep. Lightning rounds. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I, typic I typically finish my application X amount of days, hours, or minutes before the deadline. I am not a good judge. I'm not good at this. Mine was- This is, not, this is real talk. This is real talk. This, mine, was the, mine was the hour before, and with Techstars, they actually had to call me and tell me to finish. But that was a very unique <laughs> situation. I think Alpha Lab, I got in probably a couple weeks early. Great. I know I described my business well when- My mom gets it. Mm. Run it by Find that person in your circle. Yeah. Nice. Before clicking submit, I do these one to three things. Run everything through Hemingway app. So if you're not familiar with Hemingway app, it helps you con build right concise things. That's true. Mm -hmm. I forgot about that one. I love Hemingway. Mm -hmm. uh, something I wish incubators or accelerators asked about on applications, but don't currently. So, and I don't know if this is the case anymore, but you kind of brought it up. I really, I really wish there was more of a focus on like the why and the why really of like kind of personally why you're doing this. Cause I think it makes all the mm. difference. That is so, that is very true. That's very true. All right. Well, that's the conclusion of the, the lightning round. Is there anything, just a couple more additional sentences of anything we already covered that you want to say? Lindsay, you nodded. Not yet. 
There are things I will say. Leah? <laughs> we'll have time. Mm-hmm. We'll have time. All right. So, so Leah, for you, what makes an application or an applicant stand out? So we're looking at everything through the lens of team market product, right? And that's, that's going to be true for most things that you apply to. Um, generally, you're going to be really strong in one or two of those areas. And it's your job in the application to, to prove that to me. So what's going to stand out to me is, damn, this team is the team to do it. I don't care that they're not as far along. Um, maybe it's not the biggest market opportunity in the world, but these people are doing it. Um, you know, that's one direction, right? And it could be the same for any of those categories, but figure out what is your strong suit and, and we'll catch it because you're making it stand out. That's your job. Yeah, definitely team is super important. That's one of the reasons we bring people to our boot camp because we actually get to know the folks and see their coachability. Uh, that is just super helpful and sometimes hard to read through, through an application too. Uh, yeah, for me, I would say uh, you you can tell when some, I'm sorry, I'm going to repeat this. You can tell when someone Googled something, you know, and I want to see that. I want that you actually did some research ahead of time because beyond this program, it's going to end. So you need to figure out how to learn information and find information on your own. Uh, so we can't do all the work for you. And so if I could see that there's that kind of attempt to have already learned maybe talk to people, what have you tried, uh, shows that you're, you're serious about this and you're putting in some work and want to put more work moving forward. All right. Uh, what do you wish, and I will say kind of from both perspectives I want to ask, and I'll ask Lindsay first, what do you wish more, more um, actually from Lindsay's side, what do you wish more incubators and accelerators or reviewers understood about the entrepreneur completing this application? So I think it is hard for entrepreneurs to decide what to share and what not to share um, and knowing how deep to go and how not deep to go, right? So even here, you're saying you want to see that we're doing research, but how much is too much, right? So just getting an idea of like what the right amount of information is was always a little bit tricky. You don't want to go because, again, you don't want to not give enough or give too much. Um, You want to make sure that your application stands out because, you know, like they've been saying, they get a lot of applications. There's a lot to review. So you have to figure out that way to make yours stand out quickly. So thank you. That's a great answer. Leah, so what, what makes, what you, what do you wish more people understood about the application process from our side of, as the reviewer? So I think the, the most important kind of mindset thing that I can share is, um, when we're looking at companies to accept into our accelerator or for a pitch competition, it's not that we're choosing the 10 best. We're choosing the 10 best that we can help, that we're going to add value to from our particular program. So if you are a great company, Mm -hmm. but you're not a really great fit for us, you know, you, you probably won't see an acceptance and that's, that's, a, good, that's you're a, good not a great company. Yeah. yeah. It goes both ways. That's a really good point. And, you know, it has to be over the right fit for the founder, but it also has to be the right fit for the program as well. Yeah. Exactly right. We, there are companies that we would love to be able to support, but we don't have X, Y, Z. That's not our expertise. We do our best to connect them, but you know, we, we want to be really adding value. So that's, that's something to remember in, in your research for where are you applying to do that find things that really could be a good fit for you. Yeah. And if you get rejected, you can always follow up and say, you know, appreciate it. Here are some things that we are need. Is there anything you can help us with in this area? Because maybe we can't help you. We, we can't bring you entirely, but maybe we can make an introduction or something or the other. So feel and, free to do that. And I was actually just talking to Jenny Fielding runs the Techstars New York um, Accelerator. And she actually just told me the story about a company that applied in 2017, didn't get in. She said to them, stay in touch. She said, I say it all the time, nobody does it. So that's one thing to keep in mind is you can stand out by just keeping in touch, right? Even if it's a monthly update. Um, she continued to talk to them. They would stop by her office hours. She accepted them into the program two years later and they just raised a $10 million round. They didn't give up. Sometimes it's that timing. Money, sometimes it's that, mo- 
Mm -hmm. That monthly or quarterly, whatever update, I've heard that from investors, oh. from program people where they were like, I wasn't ready when you first approached me, but you kept me up to date. And then I eventually was ready for you. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I wish people understood, and I agree with what Leah said. Leah and I used to work with Uprise together, so we're really close and I miss her. But, um, <laughs> but I wish people realized like, us saying no doesn't mean we dislike you. It doesn't mean that we yeah. don't believe in the problem. I've had people call me and yell at me. It's like, well, don't you think that people with XYZ problems should be served? I'm like, I totally like I'm not that's not what I'm saying that's not what I'm saying and only because the problem is important doesn't mean that your solution or your current approach is the right approach to uh, or we know of other approaches or solutions so I wish people understood that and that we don't hate you reach out we want to help you maybe in a different capacity or to better to improve your application for next time all right so so one question here and and I'm curious from both ends too is are there any tips for someone who doesn't have a business background and how to navigate or feel comfortable in, in applying to an app where there are all these terms out there? And so this year for our incubator, we did attach a glossary for our application to hopefully provide you some definitions of things to help with that. But for Lindsay or, or Leah, what, any tips for someone in that situation? Do you want to go first, Leah? Uh, so, for, so for me, um, wait, what was the question again? I lost it. <laughs> Someone who doesn't have a business background. Oh, yeah. How can, you get, uh, how can they become comfortable and confident? My degree is in journalism. I have no, I, I had no background in business. I had no background in any of this. Um, I always say, um, I think honesty really is important. I think surrounding yourself with the right people who can help you on that business side of things Chris Millard was just on here. I don't know if he is anymore, but he's like one of those guys who he knows like the back end operational stuff of like the, how to run startups. Like people like that are willing to like take a look at things for you and help you with that kind of stuff. Um, so I think that's kind of kind of important. Definitely, and I, I can add to that. This kind of builds off of what I was saying um, in my last remark. It's just that for us at Alpha Lab and Alpha Lab, you're an innovation works, that business background is what we can help you with. Exactly. So if you're a technical founder. Well, then, hey, that's a great fit because you can learn this stuff. Yeah. Um, it certainly makes sense to get in touch with somebody else outside of us ahead of time. Make sure that your application makes sense. Make sure that you understand what you're talking about. You can reach out to um, the organization that you're applying to, too, because most of us will have open office hours or an info session or some other way that you can talk to us beforehand. Um, but yeah, that, and, and there's always something, missing. there's always something missing, right? Like you're not everybody, you're never going to be everybody. So I think being realistic and honest about that is super important. I mean, I, it, it was really hard. Not only was I a solo founder the second time, but I'm a non-technical founder. So that, that just had the odds were stacked against me from the beginning with that. So it's really, I think about crafting the story that makes the most sense about, again, why you and why now? That's, I think so much of it goes back to that. And we have to remember imposter syndrome is real and this is not going to be the first time you're going to feel that. Yes. Okay. So consider this an exercise where we don't get to see you freaking out, writing the application to just put yourself out there and give it a try. And when, and if you get rejected, then you can follow up and ask for feedback with something unclear. You're going to have to be crappy at things for a while before you can be good at them. And yes, like hug yourself afterward or something or during, if that's what helps you get through it or have a glass of wine for your draft. Don't submit, submit while you're sober. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it's, it's true. And you just, and you just, just have to put yourself out there because that's what an, an entrepreneur and you're gonna as an entrepreneur in general you're gonna be told no many times and so just consider this so we're we're here to help you like we're the nicest people you're gonna meet okay <laughs> and, and well again I I sold my first company and still was so um I lacked so much confidence even going in the second time like knowing I'd even done it the first time so like I know for me at my age with the level of experience, if I'm, if I'm having these feelings the second time around doing a startup, that if this is your first time, it's even so much more elevated. 
But just remember, I think one of the things you need to keep in mind is like how much value you're adding. I think so many founders go into these conversations with accelerators or investors or whoever, and you immediately think that you're less than them for some reason. That's bullshit because you guys are the ones actually building stuff. So remember that and walk into those conversations and know you need me as much as I need you. And that mentality gets lost a lot. And especially with female and minority founders, we have a really hard time believing in ourselves to do this. But you have to remember, they wouldn't be making money if we weren't building companies. So just keep that in mind. Do you see how hard Nadelia and I were nodding during all of that? Like we couldn't, we couldn't nod our heads more. Absolutely. And, and uh, all right, so, so the next question is, is sort of similar where it makes it hard, where it's easy to feel like an imposter is, you know, when you're an early stage company and maybe they're not in the prototype phase, maybe they are, you know, how, you don't know what your stuff is going to cost. You don't know what your business is going to look like. You just got this inkling of this idea. Maybe you got something that kind of works. And so how do you even sell that vision? How do you even, when you don't even know for yourself? Lindsay, I want you to go first on that one. Oh, wait, I can't hear you. You're I'm unmuted. Not, uh, you're muted. Obviously. And we missed a joke. I obviously, I'm that person. Can you repeat it again? Because I was also um, responding to a direct message real quick. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for, for an early stage founder who may have a prototype, maybe not, they don't know what their business model might be, or they don't know yeah. what they're going to price something at because you don't know until you actually are out there. And so at this stage, how can you say like, how can you communicate and get yeah. someone on board to buy in when you don't, when you have all these question marks? Yeah. My first company had a very, very straightforward business model. And my second one did not. And it was, um, it was a bike app. So it was an app that helps cyclists find the safest route. It was a B2C app. I had had all this B2B experience before, when I went B to C, I knew going into the accelerators, I wasn't generating revenue. So when I went into Techstars, I was even at the end of Techstars, I wasn't generating revenue. That was a whole other problem. But I went in with three ways, like really solid ways that I could generate revenue. And I had talked to people. So it goes back to, you were talking about this in the beginning. You have to talk to customers. You have to get on the phone with people and talk to them. Um, but I went in with three really solid options. And I was like, I've talked to these people and I modeled them out. Like, and again, I'm not, I have no business background. You can find templates for this stuff, but I just showed them what I think I could do. And again, like you were saying, if, if you can show that you've at least put the thought into it and that you, you can't walk in and say, I want to, um, I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to generate, I'm just going to figure it out later. Like you have to have thought about it at least, like at least put that much effort into it. <laughs> Absolutely. What about, what about you, Leah, when you're reading, what do you, what are some kind of the components you look for in order to, for someone to communicate? I don't have that figured out, but like, here's what I got and you will accept them. So it's, it's team market product again. So um, in lieu of traction and that traction being, you know, having paid pilots or paying customers or anything like that, um, other things that you can have are really strong customer discovery where you can you can say what you've done to got to get to this point where you understand that you've got something that people are willing to pay for and that in the case of physical products it's something you can make um i think that is the one, one of the strongest things that you can include when you get to that question of traction, just saying, oh, we're, we're pre-revenue. Well, that gives me nothing. I, it just, I, I, I can't give you an A plus on that. I can give you a, a blank. Um, so give me something that I can give you an A on. What, what did you do? Um, and then of course, because you've got these different categories that we're looking at, you know, if that one isn't your strongest one, if the stage is not far along, we're not reviewing who's the furthest along. That's not what accelerators do. Mm -hmm. um, why are you the team to do it? Why is this the market to go after? Mm -hmm. Going after Leah is so easy because I just go, I agree with what she said. <laughs> yes, what she said. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And, and yeah, there have been people that we've accepted that were just totally idea totally idea but but they they knew they wanted to get somewhere 
and and they were something enough where we could work with that like you can't it's, it's what you can teach and when you can't teach right we can teach terms we can't teach that like drive and passion and kind of desire for a vision even if it's going to be completely wrong there are people who have applied and had their model they had everything figured out and then two months working with them everything we had to change everything and that's, you know, that's just how it is. So we don't expect you to have it 100% right or successful from, from the start. I, I would actually right. bet anyone here a thousand dollars right now that the business you're working on will not be the same one in two years. Like it won't be the exact same thing. It'll be a version. It shouldn't. Of it. It'll be a version of yeah. it. A thousand dollars if anyone wants to take me up on it. <laughs> I don't have it, but we can, we can try. <laughs> direct message Lindsay if you want to. Yeah, direct me. I, I think, I think so, LinkedIn says you're an investor, right, Lindsay? So that's, that makes a lot of sense to me. You yes. invest in early stage bets. Yes. Startups. I love it. <laughs> so, so, uh, Leah, for you, do you accept any lifestyle businesses? So for those who don't know, lifestyle businesses are typically not on the venture track. They're not looking to grow really quickly and sell their business right away. It's something that maybe you want to be the CEO of for a long time. Uh, so so for your for your work or your program, Leah, do you accept those kinds of businesses? So Innovation Works makes tech-based investments. So that's, that's kind of the most important thing to consider. Are there businesses within the portfolio that are long-term revenue generating businesses? Certainly, um, but they need to be tech-based to be eligible for the type of investments that we make. That's where our funding comes from is making those investments that create more jobs in Southwestern Pennsylvania. And I think that kind of goes back to how do you pick the incubator accelerator. So, so I think IW, among a lot of things, provides that capital for you. At Ascender, we we give up to five thousand dollars and in just grant money. So it's just it's yours. Uh, but but we use it more as an opportunity to practice how do you manage and 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 think thoughtfully of how you spend money. But for us, it's that network of mentors and experts that we have that we introduce you to. And so you can ask like, well, who is that? We've had people, we've found UX designers for people. We found mentors, we found investors for people. And, and IW has a great list of that as well. And they have their specialties. We, I, we accept more lifestyle businesses because we don't do uh, investments in that way. And so again, it's just differences. You have to decide what works for you. One is not better than the other. All right. Anything I haven't covered yet? Because we had thirty, we had thirty questions. Okay. Any additional comments? All right. So let me actually get one from the chat here, asked by Cassie. So how do you walk the fine line of self awareness and why you, especially when it's a solo, non technical founder? I can jump in here. Um, so for me, self awareness is about understanding, also who is around you. So the, the self-awareness, the lack of self-awareness that raises a red flag is no one has ever done this before, nor will they ever do it. And we have no competition. It's just not true. I immediately said this earlier. Um, but why you? I have no reason to not believe that, that you're a founder that can do this, you know, and whether that is, um, something that you did in high school that put you on this track fine great talk about you know like to Lindsay's point talk about your story if um you know you you have three degrees that make you the expert in this field great talk about that there's no reason for me to to doubt you oh Lindsay is talking you owe me a dollar again it's a dollar every time she talks I, on you I, <laughs> I do I do find like what you were saying though that there is this, this like arrogant, like an arrogance versus self-awareness. And I think Cassie, maybe that's what you're kind of talking about is you don't want to come off as being like overly confident because you know that that being said, men don't mind doing that. <laughs> Let's be honest. I, I have a couple of guy friends. I'm like, they did. They're so this guy, Jake Siegel, he, he has this company in Detroit called Tome Software he can walk in anywhere and just exude this like, and unfortunately, like we haven't had the luxury of being able to do that as much. When I was raising money um, for Lane Spotter in 
2018, uh, non-technical solo female, female founder. It was really, really hard. It was really intimidating. But again, I think I made it that way. I walked in with the wrong mindset into almost all the meetings I had. I wasn't believing in myself enough. I really just was not believing in myself enough. So again, it goes back to like, you know, you're doing this for a reason. You believe like this, this is an itch that you need to scratch for some reason, right? And you need to tell that story. You need to explain why you are so driven to do this thing. And whether or not it's you alone or not, I think there's, I walked into a meetings with investors and I said to them, I always love this though, it's changed a little bit. Um, I would say, I know my weakness is the fact that I'm a solo founder. I would love your help finding the right CTO. And then they'd be like, we love what you're doing, but we just can't invest in solo founder. I'm like, what the, right? Like it's changing though. And I will say from where I was in 2018 to 2021, I'm getting, I'm even, I'm having different conversations with people and there are more opportunities for solo and non-technical and female founders now than there were by far even three years ago. So I'm, I'm confident that we're going to see this continue. Um, it's not moving fast enough in my opinion, but we're getting there. And, and I think it has to do, and this might, I'm going to work out this example and I might regret it, but I think about narcissists. Okay. So narcissists will say, I am the best at this and yeah. no one else. And as an entrepreneur, you need a little bit of that. Okay. Cause you got to mm -hmm. sell. But when it talks about self-awareness versus arrogance, to me, self-awareness is I am very good at this. And here's why versus arrogance mm -hmm. is like, you're welcome. You know, and yeah. so, yeah. so it's, it's, it's different. It's, we're talking about the same thing, right? You're still exuding, but the way you speak about it is different. I respect more the first part because you're backing it up with substance uh, and versus the latter. It's just, where's, where is the substance? I don't hear it. Yeah. And unfortunately, frankly, that's going to change person to person the way I perceive it, yeah. the way Leah perceives it. Lindsay, if she's, you know, on that receiving that will perceive it differently too. Uh, and that just has to do with the style. You go to Silicon Valley, they talk totally different uh, in, in, the, in those rooms. So, so you're going to also have to learn and attend pitch competitions around the nation. It's all virtual now. So also learn that language. If I can add one more thing here, through, through traveling with the Hardware Cup, I've absolutely seen this where we have startups from all over the world now who are pitching. And depending on the investors that you're pitching to, sometimes they'll say, oh, those Pittsburgh startups, you know, they, they talk like, like they're shy about their business. We're used to, you know, the West coast. I'm the only one who could possibly do this and you want me and I'll walk away from this. Um, so who you're talking to is, you know, everybody's going to have a, a different perspective on that. But I think through, through what we've talked about here, you know, you can strike a balance there where, you're someone that we want to work with that would be that would be a good start you want to be someone that joins a program and is you know additive that that is a good member of that group so the arrogance is not going to help you but confidence for heckin sure yeah i've definitely watched pitch competitions either in pittsburgh or outside where when I watch this person, I was like, that is arrogance. That is just, total, I don't, I don't even want to have, a, I don't want to hang out with this guy. I don't want to do business with this guy, nothing. Uh, and, and because that makes it seem that it, you don't have to listen to the advice. Like our programs, we're good. Like we're helping you out. Okay. You don't have to take our advice, but you need to at least list. Chris is like really laughing. I need, I need, we're going to record soundtrack, like laugh track here with Chris here, but it, it, it you, by don't watch other people present, watch other people speak, hear some of the words, hear how they talk about and, and think about how you felt or, or interpreted that. Was it clear? Was it unclear? Was it too arrogant? Was it, you know, confident? And you start to learn as well. And, the, and bringing it back to the application, spend some time in, in either looking at the social media, the website, look at the language that that program is using, and in particular, what their goals are, and you can, and you can shape your application to speak. So think of it as like you're applying to a job. Or getting married. Any, <laughs> I 
getting married. <laughs> well, you're, you're you, these people are going to have a convertible note. They're in your life forever. Don't forget that. It's a long-term relationship. It's a long-term relationship. And I screwed up so bad the first time. I mean, honestly, like it goes back to the same thing about like picking, you know, picking the right investors and, and the program falls into that because ultimately like they have a note, they're going to be in the conversation. They may have a, some sort of seat at the table. So, you know, you want to make sure you're picking the right people. It'll make your life miserable if you, if you don't, I will warn you. And, and even if you're not on the venture track, just because we accept those not on the venture track at Ascender, I want to speak to this. It's, it's also... I keep people in mind when the opportunity arises, okay? And I and I treasure the relationships of potential mentors and investors that I have. I don't want to introduce them to someone who I think is going to, you know, come off in a way that is going to ruin my relationship with them that therefore impacts relationships to future entrepreneurs I can support. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And I always ask for feedback. I sometimes call Ani and I was like, in that conversation, did... How, how do you think I came off? Like, was I at least fair and respectful, but firm? Like, you can be firm and be respectful at the same time, too. So, so always ask for feedback as well from people who you know will tell you the truth. A lot of people are trying to be nice. People, find your mom, find your friend, find whatever. All right, the last question before we go was uh, submitted by Chris. Uh, and I think maybe for both, okay? Uh, so he wanted to know on the reviewer side, how many beers do you have before or during reviewing applications? Leah. I'm first. Um, you know, on our application, we can, we have you list the founders. So if the founder is Chris Millard, 20 or so, so I can get through it. Otherwise, Girl, I'm sober. I'm trying to take in your business serious. <laughs> exactly. I Lindsay, how many when you definitely had a beer while while doing the application? Absolutely. And then one after submitted. Because choose my limit. You had to treat yourself. If I have exactly. three, it does not go well. And Chris Millard can tell you that. <laughs> all about Chris. This is this is all about Chris, really. It's all, it's all about Chris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, for me, I'll have maybe a beer drink. Usually I'm reading like a lot of applications, maybe like 32, maybe 150. So depending on the engagement. And so I'm, if I'm in the tail end, maybe I'll have a beer, but usually like I'm getting older. I can't drink like that anymore. Can you, I'm do you do big lots of review? So both of you, I'm curious. Like, do oh, you, that's do a you great do three hours, right? So, and Lee and I have gone to coffee shops together and worked on applications, reviewed together, but at least for me, I think about when is the deadline, how many applications I have to review, and I budget about 15 minutes for each of them, and I calculate overall amount of minutes I'll need to get through of them, and then I block evening, I do evening times typically to, you know, from on Monday, I would like to get through 10, Tuesday, and then I'll know if I'm, I'm always behind, I don't always get through all of them on schedule, but it, I, I try to break it up in that way. How about Absolutely. you? I, I have to break it out and have it on my calendar spread out because I, you can feel just like anything, uh, you can feel when you get to a point where you're like, I'm not going to treat this fairly because I'm tired. Shut it down. We'll look at it again tomorrow. So, you know, I think it's really, really important to, to give everyone their, their fair shot at things. So I got, I've got to spread it out over time. Yeah, my cap at, at in one sitting, maybe like two or three hours, but I might have a small break in between and, you know, some jams or something. Uh, and then do you guys provide, we, pro, if someone asks, a sender will provide feedback uh, yeah. and we always offer it, but a lot of people don't take us up on it. We do provide feedback on the application. Does IW provide feedback if someone asks, Leah? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We, we have open office hours all of the time, always on calendars. So, you know, it is, they are meant to be used, but you've got to ask for it. We don't just write to you and say, Hey, here's what we think about you. You got to ask for it. Yeah. I got, I got right. rejected. I got rejected from, um, Stadia, um, ventures, which was more of a sports related kind of accelerator program. And I did ask for feedback and one of the guys from the board called me and we had like an hour conversation and he was like, 
we actually really liked what you're doing. And we didn't think it was the right fit for us based on like, yes, bikes are sport, but you're doing more transportation. And he ultimately made introductions in St. Louis that allowed me to launch there. So again, this is one of the things that Techstars teaches you that I think is really important. It goes back to the mentor network is when it's not who's sitting in front of you. So you might be scheduled to meet with me and you'll look at my LinkedIn or whatever. And you'll be like, she seems, she seems super cool, obviously, but um, she, I don't know if she's relevant to my, like, can she help me? And uh, what I would say is um, don't look at it like that. Think about all the people I know. Every person you meet has 500 connections on LinkedIn. You have no, I actually went through tech stars. Cassie's on this call. I was at a sender sitting next to her partner and her partner told me the tech stars was in town. I didn't know. And I biked down to Alloy 26 and met with them. And that's how it happened. So again, like you just never know. Don't ever judge somebody by just like their experience because you have no idea what their background is and who they who they know. And and here's the last question because I know we're a little bit over because uh, uh, we're gonna review a couple about your applications for those who volunteered. Is do early applications get preference or do they get forgotten over time? For us, we it, we don't we provide feedback and have a number and we review. It's, it's all numerical, so it doesn't matter if it was at the beginning or at the end. Uh, I usually recommend you don't wait till the end because I also just reviewed a bunch of applications. Uh, but but those in the beginning, definitely not because at the end, we review, we talk about all of them and those who surface from a score. And sometimes we give, we give scores, but we don't always uh, accept the highest scoring people. That's just kind of a starting point for the conversation. Leah, what about you? I have two answers here. So for the hardware cup, we do it just like um, Nadeli said, we're, we're reading everything at once. So it's, it's not until the application deadline passes that we're actually reviewing all the applications. So no preference there, but get it in, make sure that you, you get it in on time. Um, for Alpha Lab and Alpha Lab gear, we actually are just about to roll out like on Monday, um, a new system where we will always have our application open. So yeah, stay, stay tuned for more, for more news on that, but we think it's going to be really good for, for founders, for us, that we can kind of meet you where you are, when you are, and get you what you need, nothing more, nothing less. So uh, yeah, that, that's two a, different answers. That's a, perfect, that's a perfect transition. So to end this all, is there anything you want to add, something you're doing personally, professionally, you want to tell this group about, to follow you somewhere, or to apply at something? So Lindsay, anything you got going on? Um, I'm writing a book. It's called This Better Work. And it is my 15 years as a female tech founder in the Midwest and my experiences around that. Um, I just posted today that I'm resurrecting Lane Spotter, which was the startup that I launched and burned to the ground two years ago. So I'll be doing that. And then I actually have a really big announcement for next week as well, but I can't share it yet because it's exclusive in TechCrunch on Tuesday. So look for it. That's all I'm saying. Right. <laughs> oh my God, did you and then, plan this panel for Lindsay? Because that is quite the lineup. That's awesome. And then, Congratulations. And, and Leah, in addition to the open enrollment, uh, anything else you want to advertise before we close up? Yes, really quickly. Hardware Cup, physical product companies anywhere around the world eligible to apply $50,000 cash grand prize, no equity. Uh, that application closes on th this Sunday, February 21st. So check out hardwarecup.com. Shoot me a message if you have questions. And yeah, look out for, the, for that announcement from Alpha Lab and Alpha Lab gear. And as sender, we have our incubation application that's due March 8th. Uh, and so check our website out for, for details there. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Leah. This was, I had so much fun. <laughs>